Uh, hi everyone, we have Dan White, Managing Partner um, of uh, Naivi Consulting today uh, to talk about innovation in the insurance uh, industry. So hi Dan, thanks for being with, with us. Why don't you talk to us about uh, about your background and how you, how you made it to the insurance industry first? <laughs> Kind of by accident, uh, rather than by design, I um, I ran a digital agency back in the noughties and uh, I ended up with a client, um, part of what's now Direct Line Group in the UK, a commercial insurer, and started helping them on their digital transformation journey. And it's a, it's a small and relatively incestuous industry, isn't it? And so one client uh, moved somewhere else, took us with them, and I ended up um, working with a lot of the, the main UK um personal lines clients back in the noughties, helping them on their digital transformation journey. And then um, over the last few years, that's morphed into um, more focus on commercial lines and, and innovation within the insurance space. Can you can you talk about your, your product, your offering, your value proposition, and maybe a little bit of your experience with working with insurance companies? Sure. Um, 90 is, uh, so that's what I spend my time on. I'm managing partner there. Uh, 90 are innovation experts in the insurance sector. So we only work in insurance, we only work in innovation. We, we, if you like, if there's a, a sweet spot intersection of those two things, that's where we exist. Right. Um, the thing we're famous for is taking new insurance ideas to market in 60 days. So we run a, an accelerated innovation process that brings the creativity and the discipline to new insurance innovation challenges, um, often product innovation, sometimes proposition innovation. And we also so, wait, so you said you didn't say 60 months or 60 or six years. 60 days. Yeah. It's 60 days. Gotcha. Okay. 60 days, 60 working days. We use a thing called a, a one, two, three framework. And it's uh, fundamentally, uh, though, an innovation is about a combination of creativity and discipline. The creativity is about the inspiration and the, the novel and the bold. The discipline is about knowing how much to invest in that idea right, before you kill it or scale it. And so what we try and do is, is blend those two things together so that actually very quickly you can either kill an idea, we do that normally after one day, or take it through a, a series of, of staged investments, which when we compress them together, act over, 50, over sorry 60 working days um, to get into a market pilot state. That's not necessarily the scaled operation, but it is in market, real products, real risk, real money, real customers. Um, so we spend a lot of time doing that. We've done that with uh, organizations like Allianz and AXA, Zurich, Swiss Re, um, Travelers, uh, Liberty Mutual and others. And um, the other thing we do is to help insurers become better at doing innovation. So we, we wrestle with the challenges around operating models, structures, incentives, innovation funding, those kind of challenges which are often barriers that prevent effective innovation within insurers. Um, so those are the things we do. We're also a, a social enterprise, so a business with a social purpose, first and foremost. I gonna, yep, I was going to ask. Yep. Ah, well, the clue's in the name. So 90% um, of all the profit we make, we give away to charitable causes, particularly dealing with extreme poverty in developing countries. And our view is we're here serving the risk management industry as a, as a for-profit business that we choose in, in, out of generosity, really, to, to give the, the profits from that, 90% of those profits, to people to help them manage the risk in their own lives. So what actually traps people in poverty in those situations is very often the kind of risks of every day, right? the health risks, the, the, the weather risks, and so on. Um, so that's what our, our mission is to, is to do, is to serve the insurance industry, help it become better at innovating um, so that it can thrive. And in turn, we, we choose to give away our profit to make the world a, a better place, particularly for the extreme poor. That's whole another reason to, to start working with you anyway, beyond your deep expertise <laughs> in the innovation and insurance space. So thanks for thanks for being a company like this, actually. A very Thank few you. Are, are like you. Um, so one of the things that you also do is um, every year, right? If I'm not mistaken, is the insurance idea pulse, uh, where mm -hmm. you give insights uh, to your partners about uh, about and trends about insurance innovation. Can you talk? Uh, a little bit about that and maybe a couple of insights that you can share with us sure yeah so we are we're not a research a research company we're, we're practitioners of innovation uh, with and, and for the insurers but um because we're so focused we're, we're not a generic management consultancy we're not doing innovation for lots of different sectors we're very focused 
it allows us to geek out about a couple of different questions. One of those questions is, what are the ideas in insurance today? And so every couple of weeks, we are polling the insurance world, monitoring 250 large insurance businesses from Ping An over in China through to MetLife over in, mm. in uh, the States and everything in between. And um, looking at what are the ideas that are flowing around insurance today? Um, what could a any given insurer learn from that collection of ideas? Um, and where are the gaps between ideas where there is still competitive advantage to be had? Which I think is the most, one of the most interesting things. Yeah. So right now, for instance, based on our, our study last year, one of the biggest opportunities we think for radical innovation where very few people are doing anything is in product innovation within life insurance. It's a difficult yeah. category to innovate and you can, you can innovate the brand, you can innovate operations and so on. But the product itself is a, is a tough thing to innovate because of the, the longevity of, of the risk. Um, and yet, because no one is innovating in life product, whoever actually nails that thing could take a significant market advantage. Um, and things like genetics and genomics would be potential starting points for that. So that's um, that's what we do. The the insurance idea pulse. Um, uh, there's, there, there are chunks of it available free on our website and so on. We've also been monitoring the COVID-19 impact. And um, just one insight I'll share with you from that. So there's an obvious one, which is that health insurers are innovating much harder than they have previously. Um, but the other one, which is slightly less obvious, is that the, the other category that we've seen really rise in its innovation intensity is specialty and complex commercial lines. Uh, PNC stuff and really that's uh, I think a result I would imagine we're still analyzing the data but I would expect that's a result of um, insurers dealing with the fallout from business interruption the kind of new cyber risks that are coming out of the work and home uh, space um, and so on there's also some stuff arising right around the climate change ESG sustainability space and that's coming through quite strongly in, in commercial so one of the yeah. other tricky uh tricky uh, questions that I wanted to ask you is um, the challenges. When you work with insurance companies, what are the maybe like top three challenges that you face? Um, in one of them, I'll, I'll give you a hint maybe, uh, maybe it's been a challenge or not, but I can definitely think that, you know, uh, you're working on, you just said, right, 60 days to innovate, to, to, to go to market with an innovative uh, product. Well, you, of course, you have to work with actuaries and, 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 and underwriters and product owners um, who has, you know, 10, 20, 30 years of experience. So how do you navigate, and you are not the expert there, they are, right? You are the innovation guy. So how do you navigate uh, through those dynamics and, and make it happen in 60 days? Mm -hmm. So a lot of this, um, <clears throat> a lot of the challenge around innovation comes down to how we as people behave. Um, so there's a question of incentives and there's a question of um, our egos, right? So if, if you and I are, let's say, two actuaries in, a, in, in an insurance business and you are working on an innovation project, my ego as an actuary not working on that innovation project is probably to criticize it and to cast aspersions and cast doubt and try to wrap it in process and ask challenging questions that don't particularly right. help the initiative. Um, the, the, what, what, what's, I guess, commonly abbreviated to the, the not invented here syndrome, right? That kind of thing starts kicking in um, and humanity gets in the way of, of innovation through that. Um, so the way we, we deal with that, which is a, a very common challenge, is we, we, we build a team, a cross-functional team and we take that whole team through the process. So we have the actuaries who are going to be involved in designing the products and signing it off later. We have them involved on day one where we have customers in the room with us. And so they are listening to the customer expressing their frustration or their pain point or their need. Which means that when we move them into, the, into day two and they're, um, and I'm simplifying the process here, but move them to day two and they are, they're, the, the, the actuaries are part of the process of coming up with an idea they are doing so having been inspired by and having been, um, I guess, given some impetus by listening to the customer firsthand. When they're then building that idea or, or conceiving that idea, as we move them into day three, day four, day five, and so on, and they start moving into execution, build, construction, compliance, sign up, and so on, they're now actually invested in that idea. It's their idea. 
And in the same ways, it's their idea. It's also the IT guy's idea because he's in the room. And it's the operations lady's idea because she's in the room with us. It's the compliance person's idea because they're also in the room with us. And so we have a, a, a cross section of six or seven different subject matter experts in the room with us. And they, they become advocates and owners and enablers of the idea. And that's a big part of how we um, avoid those kind of issues. That's great. Um, uh, you're basically creating a collaborative environment and, and, mm -hmm. and you're leading that group um, to, or towards an innovative uh, cycle, right? And uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure the, the company approach or, uh, or leadership messaging and, and, and mindset also is, is critical here, right? At, at the end of the day, you are working with, with the folks at the company. Um, but how about uh, companies that don't have innovation in their agenda? What would you say to them? Mm -hmm. So I, I hear the kind of provocative nature of the question and I'll, I'll answer it in a provocative way. So I think that all insurers are innovating, right? Some are, they're innovating in different ways with different levels of ambition. Um, some of them are, are innovating the, the kind of the, the very incremental core of their business. They're doing it in very safe ways. They're not, they wouldn't ever describe themselves as having an innovation team or a budget, but they are innovating. Right? The fact that insurers the world over went work from home in a handful of days, just a few months back, that's a phenomenal innovation. And necessity is the mother of invention, right? right. So necessity is shaping insurers the world over and, the, and they are responding by innovating. Now, there are insurers who are innovating in much more dramatic, much more high PR worthy kind of ways, much more risk taking ways. Some of them are, are, are placing some good bets and getting them right. And some are taking placing poor bets and getting them wrong. Right. Um, but the, I would, I would suggest that the, 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 the future competitive advantage is being shaped today by insurers who are investing in and in innovation and are doing so in disciplined ways. All right. So, um, if, if the competitive advantage in the future is a factor of the, the, the intelligence and the energy and the scalability of the bets that people are placing now, then those people who are placing the big bets and are doing so in disciplined, diligent ways, they're going to be the winners of tomorrow. So I would say to the to insurers who perhaps think of themselves as non-innovative, that you probably want to dial that up a little. You know, don't 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 um, don't do yourself down. You are innovating in your business. You're just doing so in small ways, and you probably need to place a few bigger bets. Be careful about the bets you choose, and that's where, for instance, the idea pulse that you mentioned can help with the selection of ideas. Be disciplined about how you execute those ideas. Otherwise, you'll be throwing money away. Mm. And um, yeah, have some fun. Insurance is supposed to be, it should be a fun space to be in. It is a fun space to be innovating in. So before we end the interview, one last question about that, because uh, imagine uh, an insurance company, you know, saw this interview, heard you speaking passionately about innovation and insurance and said, okay, uh, you know, uh, yes, I want to in innovate. So then we have two different aspects or, uh, you know, internal innovation. Okay. I will hire five people and let's just, you know, get rolling. Uh, and also there's this uh, other option, which is, uh, you know, let me partner with someone. This can be a consulting firm. This can be an innovation lab, startup lab, whatever that is. Right. Uh, or both. So there's no, I'm pretty sure there's no right answer here, but, uh, what would you, what would you suggest? So I would, um, I, I would actually point them to a, a piece of research we've just published, I think just last week, called The Blueprint, The Insurance Innovation Blueprint, which is designed as a, as a, as a handbook, as a manual for chief innovation officers and insurers in, in working at how to do innovation better. And it looks at the question of right, internal versus external, um, open innovation versus non. Um, how do you incentivize innovation? What are the reporting lines that make most sense? Um, does corporate venture capital, strategic VC, does that does that help, or is it um, uh, or is it difficult to make work? Now, what about kind of more exotic forms of innovation like venture building and, and using venture studios? 
Um, so I point them to that um, and details on our website for that. And, and, and I'd be happy to have a, a conversation with, with people on that front. Um, but I would also, if you like, if, if you want to, uh, I only point to that because we, we launched it last week and I think it's, it's the most helpful answer I can give. But a, a more generic answer would be test and learn the, in the innovation approach. Be humble and be accountable. Humility and accountability are two words which um, too many innovation leaders, sometimes myself included, shy away from because we like the boldness of creativity and we don't like the accountability and the scrutiny. Um, innovation can be a hard thing to justify and <laughs> so we tend to shy away oh, yeah. from accountability. But it's accountability that actually gets ideas to scale and it's ideas at scale that make innovators heroes. Right? So accountability, humility, test and learn. Listen to your colleagues, listen to the businesses, stay as close as possible to the PLs. PLs, that's where the money is made, that's where the problems are loudest. That's where the customers are most uh, most proximate. And that's where most innovation should happen. Um, so yeah, stay humble, stay accountable, innovate as close as possible to the PLs and iterate your, your innovation journey. Uh, Dan, thanks a lot for, for being here with us. Uh, great, great insights. Thank you. It's a pleasure, Dogan. Thank you for having me. Have a good day. All right. Thank you. Bye.